Hey guys, this is Theta. I'm going to be showing you how to make a VR headset, just a normal clamp-on headset you'd use for your phone, of course, your phone itself, and some software. It's really simple, should only take around $15 to $70, depending on the headset. This is literally going to be the most expensive part of the project. Um, but yeah, the rest of it's not too hard, but it's a lot of troubleshooting, so let's get into it. Alright guys, so the first step you're going to want to do is go ahead and install Trinus VR. Um, so I already have it installed, I'm going to run it. I'm also going to put a link up to my configuration file that I got working for this setup. I just have it set to Mido 5.1 because it's the largest uh, image you can really get on the screen out of all the available options. Um, you can mess around with that all you like. It really just changes the size and orientation of the two video uh, inputs you'll see on your phone. So the next thing is image scale. The important thing here is you'd think you'd want to put it as high you know, depending on your phone, like if you're Android, you know, it can support it, you want to put it as high as possible, or you'd want to put it as low as possible to minimize lag. However, I've found that the optimal setting for this actually is just to try to get it to the closest resolution that's native on the phone, meaning that the phone's resolution matches the uh, image scale here almost exactly. For my iPhone 6S, that's high. Um, you can change this and mess with it. Um, I wouldn't choose these auto adjust settings just because I've had it where they disconnect because it's a lot of processing to switch resolution in the middle of, you know, recording. For compression, I just put it about there because if you're compressing stuff too much, it does get harder to transfer over Wi-Fi. But if you don't have it compressed at all, it, even though it looks, you'd think it would look nicer, I found that it looks really pixelated. Um, so I'm actually going to get my uh, VR headset well phone <laughs> hooked up real quick so the way to do that as you'll see in the program is to hit this button after hitting the button on the phone there's an app called Trinus VR I'm gonna record it right after just to get some troubleshooting out because there is a lot of troubleshooting with this you have to make sure you know what you're uh, doing and if you don't know what you're doing I'll help you through it so don't worry about it so let's go to the next settings here NVIDIA optimized obviously you just check this if you have NVIDIA drivers on your computer don't use Moonlight as um, it's really only for uh, Android phones at the moment. Although Moonlight is a great app and can let you play Steam games from your phone, just like it's a um, Shield, which is pretty cool. So sensor mode, I just set it to mouse lock, which means that it is using the mouse. However, it can't move it. What it does basically is it makes it so that whenever you move your phone, the gyroscope in the phone moves the uh, mouse on your screen, which is really cool for certain games. But when you're hooking up the Steam VR, you don't really need that. Um, the Steam kind of takes care of that for you. Um, so the next setting we're gonna go over here is network. Um, these ports can stay the same. Um, I would recommend using the Wi-Fi hotspot. It will start one from your computer and then you go into your Wi-Fi settings on your phone and connect to it. Just have these checked by default. Uh, it's developer settings, you know, you don't have to mess with them much. And so video is, uh, what is that? there we go. So this is what it will look like on the phone, for example. Um, you can see as I move my phone around, it's got pretty good latency. Uh, it's lagging a little bit because I'm running my streaming service, but overall it runs really great. Don't have a DPI fix. The max frame rate should be around 60. Uh, it's originally set to 70, but I just set to 60 to take a little bit of uh, stuff off my phone, you know. Um, motion boost and capture curves aren't really needed. Capture curves will make it so your phone can see the mouse. Fake 3D can be set to auto. Depending on what games you're running, you can um, manually switch it around. Like, for example, uh, Crisis 3 has stereoscopic 3D, which means that just like in this preview, it shows these two windows. Like, it, it, it basically displays the game twice. So, in that game, you'd want to turn fake 3D off because you'd see four images. And it's always better to run stereoscopic through the game because your computer is going to have a lot more processing power than your phone will. So, next thing is uh, cropping. I wouldn't suggest it. Contrast brightness, you know, pretty self-explanatory. You don't need a heads-up display, um, but if you're playing Fallout or Skyrim, apparently they have it. Sensors here. The interesting thing is I had to actually reverse the roll uh, and switch these to this order. Uh, I'm going to say, you know, I'll have this profile uh, for download, so you can mess with it all you like, but this will at least get it working for Steam VR based on my configurations. Uh, if your inputs are messed up, you just have to invert them or switch the order. It's really easy. And then I just set these to none so there's no interference. And then position tracker is nothing you really have to worry about. The Steam VR driver is here. The first time you install this, you're going to want to hit install. And then you're going to want to open up Steam VR. You're going to have to download it by going into Steam and then your library. If you click the library button, you'll see a VR section. 
and if it's not in the VR section, just go to tools. The first time you get this working, before it says ready, it will say not paired or you know something like that, and this won't show up either. So you're gonna want to hit uh, run room setup. So you're gonna see this program here. You need this stuff running before you open Steam uh, room setup. So once it's ready, hit next. When you're on Calibrate Center, you're just gonna hold it up. I have the screen facing me, obviously. Um, so you're just gonna hold it like this and hit Calibrate Center. Um, important thing to note too is if the center gets you know off or anything like that, like you have to reset it. The easiest way to recalibrate the center to default is when you launch Trinus. You can turn it on and off once DVR is working. Um, if you relaunch it, it will recalibrate to wherever you're facing when it launches. So like for me, if I'm playing a game, I like to just sit and then while I have the headset on, I click the button and there you go, you're calibrated. It's the easiest way to do it in my opinion. Um, so getting back to this. You're going to want to take some tape measures now and literally measure while standing or sitting how high your eyes are to the ground. Um, for me, it's 62 inches, so I'm going to calibrate the floor. And once you do this, it should just be set up. Alright guys, so now we're going to work on some troubleshooting. Um, I've had some problems when running this program and getting it to work. Let's go over some of them. Um, an example is if you're trying to connect to the phone, it seems like everything's fine. You're on the hotspot, you've got the programs running, and it just doesn't connect. It stays on like a, a white screen trying to connect. Like you can see, um, if it just looks like this forever, I'm purposely not running the server so I can show you an example of what it will look like. Um, the solution I've found is to go into the Trinus server on the network section, as I'll show in a second. So you can see over here on the Trinus server, it actually has this network section and you have a set IP area. Um, the, the solution for this, if the phone's not connecting, it's on the hotspot, everything should be working, is to click this box and this IP in here, you're going to want to set it to whatever is at the bottom of your phone once it says Wi-Fi detected. Another issue is yeah, sometimes you'll have to deconnect the uh, server like I just did for technical issues when you're running a game or you need to switch something. And if you do that and this thing does not appear, the little triangle to connect, and it says like socket closed, for example, um, all you really have to do is double click your home button and relaunch the app. It's that simple. Um, the other issue I've had before is where Steam just doesn't detect it or uh, it won't show that headset window. Um, if you accidentally manage to run like two VR instances or two games at once that you have VR, it will fuck everything up. Um, so the easiest solution to fix that is to just relaunch everything. Um, you just have to make sure you don't launch two instances of VR at once. Obviously you can tell why that won't work. Um, but those are really the only three main problems. If there's any other issues that you experience, obviously let me know. I'll try to look into it and uh, see if I can fix it. Otherwise, I'm going to have a link to the Trinus forms below in the description. Uh, so, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's nice to have some VR working. I'll try to get some examples, too. Um, and, alright, thanks for watching, guys.